potentially as a, as a consequence of the Israeli government's determination not to let Western news organizations into Gaza, the, the ability of uh, people outside to get clear pictures of what may or, or may not, what is or is not going on is, is harder than it would be in other circumstances. Uh, an extraordinary report reached me last night um, from both a non-governmental organization in Israel, an NGO called Breaking the Silence, the executive director of which we shall hear from shortly, and the same story in the Israeli newspaper Haaretz. And, and the story alleges that Palestinians are being routinely used as human shields or, or Possibly that's not quite an adequate description. Um, well, I, I, I shall let um, I, I shall let my guest uh, tell you the story himself because I am joined now by the executive director of Breaking the Silence, and um, I, I suppose we should begin with a question, if I may, about what your organisation is and and what your organisation actually does Nadav. Nadav Weiman uh, is, is on the line now. So why was Breaking the Silence set up, Nadav, and, and what is its purpose? Yeah, hello. Uh, so we're an organization of ex-soldiers that serve in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, what we call the territories, and we have one thing in common. We are against the Israeli military occupation. We are using our testimonies, uh, the, the operation that we took part in, the comments that we got to explain people in Israel and around the world, what is the Israeli occupation, so everybody could resist it. Uh, and our organization, by the way, started during the Second Intifada, when when IDF soldiers had to do very harsh things to suppress Palestinian violence and, and, and uprising. But, but again, and ever since, we're publishing reports about what's going on, and especially now in Gaza. And, and so all of your members are, are former, are, are military veterans, are former members of the IDF. Yes, we are uh, 1,400 soldiers, men and women, that serve in all of the different sectors and different units of, of the IDF. And uh, what, what is the genesis of your latest report then? What, what, where, when did this alleged practice first come to your attention and how have you, con how have you conducted your investigation into it? Yeah. So, so in every operation in Gaza and the West Bank, soldiers are coming to speak with us. And, and very quickly after this operation started, Soldiers approached us and talked about this uh, protocol, which is uh, widely used in the IDF. And and at the beginning, I've got to say, I was I didn't really believe that because it's a protocol that was stopped by the Supreme Court in Israel in 2005. Back then, it was called the neighbor procedure, basically taking a neighbor of the Palestinians that we want to arrest, saying, you will knock on the door, not us, IDF soldiers, and if you get shot, you'll get shot. And so that was stopped in 2005 because it was basically using Palestinians' human shields. And now a soldier came to us and told us, and then another soldier, and another one. And then we started hearing it from different units, different times. But it's all inside Gaza since the first month of the operation, which means it's, as I said, a practice that is very widely used. And, and I've got to say, you are right. Human shield is not really covering mm. uh, the entire situation. Basically... IDF soldiers are taking Palestinians from the humanitarian corridor inside Gaza, putting on them IDF uniform, in some cases, even GoPro cameras, and telling them, go into the tunnel or into a house. You will sweep it. And we will see if something will happen to you. And after that, we will enter. A, a, an ambush or a booby trap, most obviously, which they yeah. would then trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And... and, and uh, and what's amazing about it is our testifier told us that after some some of those Palestinians were doing that job for a couple of days or even a week. And after they finished, they were released. And after they were released, our testifiers understood it was Palestinians without any charges against them. They are not members of Hamas unless we won't uh, send them back home to their families. So, so a, ra a random Palestinian being dressed in an IDF uniform and sent into a potentially lethal situation in order to alert the real soldiers to the danger ahead. Exactly, exactly. Uh, if if you, you mentioned GoPro cameras, uh, have you secured footage of this? Have you? I mean, does your investigation include actual uh, video? We don't have videos. Right. But a couple of months ago, Al Jazeera managed to publish videos from a GoPro camera on one of those Palestinians. 
And I thought, by the way, that it's going to cause havoc over in Israel, that it's going to be a scandal that everybody is going to talk about. But the Israeli media didn't really talk about it. Until now, this is a very important article in Haaretz. And, and, this is, and this is another part of the fact that there isn't really conversation in Israel about our practices in Gaza, because our media is not talking about it. Military correspondents are not picking this story up. Well, well, you can imagine that that is compounded and magnified enormously outside Israel because we, uh, in in the Western media, have to rely upon whatever comes out of your country, whatever comes out of uh, uh, of, of your media. How, how many people have you spoken to? How many of your sources on this are making uh, allegations regarding things that they say they have personally witnessed? Uh, quite a lot. I don't want to name the number because... Uh... There's all kinds of things around okay. that, okay. but quite a lot. And I've got to say that the reporter, Yaniv Kobovich from Haaretz, managed to bring a lot more soldiers that they're his sources. And that, that was the moment I was surprised because we understood it's not a couple of units and it's not a couple of officers with uh, blood thirst, or I don't know what. It's a very common use protocol in the IDF. Um, I should ask what the IDF have said in response to your investigation. The IDF said that uh, it's not uh, a protocol and it goes against uh, IDF practices. But I, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to say that IDF spokesperson they have this uh, I don't know AI generating uh, responses to to this kind of allegation and it happens to us a lot. A lot of times when when things are being published about IDF soldiers doing th- things against IDF commands. IDF spokesperson will say the problem is that the soldier weren't really aware of the protocol and now we're speaking with them and that's it. That's like the the common mantra. Uh, the, the, and, I, I'm just going to read uh, the, the, the quote that they've given to the guard, I think to the Guardian in this country, or, or it may be a repetition of what they told Aretz. Uh, the orders and directors of the IDF prohibit the use of guards and civilians captured in the field for military missions that endanger them. Have these two investigations operated in isolation then? Is it, is it a coincidence that you, you have been exploring yeah. similar territory at the same time yeah but because yes it okay. was two di- separate in, in, in investigations but but think why because you have hundreds maybe thousands of soldiers that were exposed to this protocol and they want to fight hamas because they want to defend israel or they want to fight hamas because they want to release our hostages yes. or they want to fight their to i don't know make their family secure doesn't matter but they saw th- something that goes against everything we were brought on as a as a democratic citizens in israel right but again there was silence about that what one soldier had been told that Palestinian civilians were being used to replace the dog units that search for explosives because, I quote, too many dogs had died. That's, that's from the, the, the Harris report. I wonder if I may ask you a final question, Nader Feynman, and, and, and that is a question about the journey from being a good soldier who doesn't question orders and who does what he is told to being what you are today. How hard is that journey that, to make for you and your colleagues? If, I've got to say I came from a very military family. I served in the special forces. My two older brothers served in the special forces. My father was a battalion deputy battalion commander, and my grandfather was a battalion commander in '48. And before that, a major in the British Army, actually. So, so for me, it wasn't even a question. Uh, I need to go to the most combat unit that I can be in. Mm. But after you finish training and you're being sent to the West Bank after so many years of believing that that's what I need to do to to the, protect Israel. And then you find yourself as a police officer, right? Enforcing military law on civilians more than anything else. You understand that it's you know, what we call security. It's basically controlling Palestinians. Because if you really want to secure Israel, so no settlements, right? So no home invasion in the middle of the night or, or all kinds of things like that. You need to fight terror. But you fight terror a small part of the time. The, most of the time you protect violent settlers and you enforce military law on Palestinians. So I think that if you're a human being with a heart and two eyes, it is impossible to come out of the army and not want to fight the Israeli occupation. And it's a full-time job for you now. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I joined Breaking the Science for the same reason I joined the IDF. I, I want to protect Israel. And I think, I think this is protecting Israel. So yes, it's a full-time job for me. You may not want to answer my final question. How has it affected your relations with your family members? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, the beginning was quite quite tough. My 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 father called me a traitor and uh, and uh, fifth column and all of that. And one of my older brothers said that his friends died in action because of our organization, which was wasn't true, obviously. Sure. But years of arguing politically every Friday dinner and <laughs> investing a lot of efforts. All of my family members are supporting breaking the science now. So, so I, I think it was hard, it, it, hard years, very hard years, I, I, I can say. But it was worth it because that's what I want. I want the same change in my family, like the same change I want in my society. Nadav Voiman, the executive director of Breaking the Silence. Thank you. A group, as, as, as Nadav explained, founded by Israeli combat veterans to document military abuse and to end military occupation.